Paranormal investigation is a passion of mine, will always be a passion of mine. I decided to get back into the field in a much more public way because there's been a rise in claims, and I think that's due to the popularity of the field right now. And so for me, there was this onus on me to make sure it stayed on track. But in order to do that, I need a team. What is that? So first off, we have two team leaders under me. We have Daryl Marston and Kristen Looney. They're kind of like the mom and dad of the team. Daryl really is there for logistics, putting the plan together, making sure everything's covered, and we have everything we need. We help every client, and this is what we do. Kristen Lumen is patient with the client. She digs really deep into what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and how that applies to the entities that may be in the house. Jacob Henry Hyde was a devout Lutheran. He established the first Lutheran church in Ohio. So Mustafa is an avid, rabid researcher. You tell him to look up something, and he'll look it up, and he'll find six different things that you weren't even looking for. She was a German immigrant. And he connects and the dots along the way. End. And that is so important. We're here in the lighthouse. Brandon, we nicknamed the alien because he's so good with tech. So this is an ambisonic microphone. This is used a lot with VR. Above and beyond that, he's a great investigator. He knows what he's doing. He's run teams. He knows how to attack a location efficiently. He's not all robot and tech. He's got a heart. Rochelle and Brian are kind of a package deal. We don't mean to harm you or hurt you. Are you in here with us? You can send Brian into a house and he'll go anywhere. The dirtier, the grimier, the more cobwebs, the better for him. I mean, he served overseas. He's been through the worst of it. The stuff that we go through is nothing. Let's do it. I'll grab this little battery pack. Yeah, you carry that little battery pack. I got everything else, don't worry. Rochelle is brutally honest, but also just wonderfully compassionate. Like, I'm about to cry. Like. But when it comes to the paranormal, she's a little bit more sensitive. When she sees things, she has reactions to it. For her, maybe the paranormal is a little bit louder than maybe for the rest of us. So let's learn all about you guys and what got you into this all in the first place, yeah? Let's do it. And how the heck you ended up here. <laughs> oh, God. What about you, Kristen? I've been in love with the paranormal since I was a little girl. Um, you know, I had the ghost club when I was 11, and uh, <laughs> I love funny, that. I know, because my friends from grade school write to me on Facebook, and they're like, I cannot believe you're still doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I was a little girl, my mom jokes around that I checked out every book in the library in my grade school about ghosts. So I've always been a paranormal investigator, I feel like. I don't feel like there was a certain day that I, I became one. In my day job, I'm a hypnotherapist. I work with the brain, especially the subconscious mind. I went to school for psychology and I took paranormal psychology and that's where I actually learned how the mind can manifest a paranormal experience and also the difference between a paranormal experience and what the mind manifests as a paranormal experience. What is that? Wow. Daryl is one of the co-leaders with myself and Grant, and he is intimidating when you see him. <laughs> You're like, that's somebody I don't want to make mad. He is one of the kindest people I've ever been around. I feel like he is sort of the protector of the group. Ooh, heavy hits. Look at that. The reason I'm a believer of the paranormal is because I've seen it with my own eyes. In 2016, I lost my son. When I was at the hospital, a couple hours after he passed away, I was walking to the hallway, and I felt somebody run up behind me and basically grab me on my shoulder. I swung around, nobody's there. Well, there happened to be a door to the right-hand side. Lo and behold, I walked right into that same room as where his body was. That really opened my eyes. I know my son is out there waiting for me. And it made me want to pursue this in a whole different direction. My name is Daryl. This is Kristen. And we're here to listen to whatever you have to say. I dissect my investigations more now. And I think about more of the heart and the soul of the actual spirit or person we're investigating. You don't have to be afraid of us. We're not going to hurt you. We're only here to talk. Daryl, of course, part of why we picked you was, you know, that you have this construction experience. With me being a contractor, knowing how you 
housing works yeah. and he, the sounds and the difference between what's paranormal and what's not paranormal on a property. Ooh, had a three and a four down there. I mean, you bring that to the table, um, you can rule out a lot. Our second team there is Brandon Alvis, our tech manager slash alien. <laughs> we got Mustafa Gadalari, he's our researcher. What about you, Mustafa? Oh, um, the reason why I got into the paranormal was because my father moved us all into this really nice big house in New City, New York, and we got a great deal on it. You know, it's like the start of every like horror movie, you know, <laughs> and our first night when we moved in, my older brother and I were in our bedroom, we hear all these noises, and uh, we walk down the stairs, and we go into the kitchen, and then all the cabinets and drawers are just opening and closing by themselves. Mm, I've been there. And we're just like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> like, this is so cool. And the way I took it is that like, there's a communication going on here, and there's something that we can learn. And that, for me, was the, um, why I got hooked into it. A lot of paranormal investigators forget about the investigation part of this whole gig, and it's that it's a mystery. It's a mystery that you got to solve. It's something that you got to unravel. On the property, there was a cemetery. It's a stone of Samantha Carnegie, who died of typhoid fever. Her mother's buried right next to her. Samantha, if you're out here with us, can you say something to us, please? What I love about Brandon is that he is so concerned with methodology first. This guy understands paranormal tech and has been dedicated to the field for so long. Nope, oh, we're getting a temperature spike, temperature spike, look. I like to call myself a ghost geek. What I do for my day job is I'm a creative services producer for a local television station. Working in television has really aided me in understanding how to go out and document a paranormal investigation. 1.1, zero. All these years I've been doing this, 13 years now, uh, it really stems back to the death of my brothers. In 1995, my oldest brother passed away of cancer. And in 2004, I had another brother commit suicide. So that kind of sent me on my journey into the unexplained and trying to possibly prove the existence of a life after death. Hopefully, throughout all of this journey, I'll have a, a definite answer. Has she been in this house before? I love chatting uh, tech with you. I think we all do because usually when you get a, a tech specialist on the team, they just know tech and they know where to put the equipment, but they usually don't think bigger than that. And that's what I appreciate about you, is you look at the investigation as a whole and use the equipment strategically. Absolutely, it's crucial. You know, we go in to help a client, we have to make sure that we're documenting everything that we're doing and hopefully finding data that can support, you know, what this client's experiencing. And then we have Adventure Team over there. We have Brian Murray, ex-Marine, good debunker and Rochelle Stratton. I mean, you guys have investigated together before. You're best friends, your families are friends. You guys have a lot of history together, huh? Yeah, we do. Yeah. You think that helps in the investigation or it hurts? <laughs> Both. <laughs> no. It Depends helps. on the mood. Ah, <laughs> what in my mouth? <laughs> this is the <laughs> I gotta deal with. <laughs> Swallowing bugs over here. Yes. <laughs> Brian, Brian, Brian. How can I describe him? He comes across like a tough guy, but he is the sweetest person ever. I got a horseshoe in the face with it. Rochelle. She's smart, funny, sassy. Our kids go to the same school. We live three miles apart. Brian actually talks to my husband every single day. They get along great. Her husband, Chris, he was in the Marine Corps, just like I was. He's a very protective guy. He feels very confident when I'm with her. Oh, oh God. Oh, man. My military experience is an everyday thing for me. I would go to any area of any place if somebody was in danger and get them out. What was that? As soon as I got between these two door frames, got like a stabbing pain in right here. If I get in over my head, Brian's gonna be right there. He's not gonna leave me. He's gonna get me out of there if I need him. It's just great knowing that someone has your back. 100%. Are you in here with us? Hey, Ghost Hunters fans. Be sure to subscribe to the A&E YouTube channel for more paranormal content. And catch full episodes on A&E or AETV.com.